Yggdrasil translates as the one who demands reverence, but is most often simply translated as the Turbo Horse, and is another name for the deity Heimdallr. World tree, tree above the bed. This tree of life is located on the burial mound. The crown stretches into the air, the realm of spirits, Osgarder, and the roots down to hell. The stem is located in, uh, in the middle, in Middle Earth, Midgarder. There are three roots, each drinking from a sacred well, one for each. These wells are called Urdabrunner, the well of honor, esteem, Mimisbrunner, the well of memory, and Fergelmir. Ear old draft, ear old current of air, or more likely draft from the past or air current from the past. The grass was not cut, no herbs were gathered, and no trees chopped down on the burial mounds, and no animals were allowed to grass there. The mounds were fenced in to keep the anim animals out. This was a sac sacred place, in between the world of the living, Osgarder, and the world of the dead, Hel. It was the Middle Earth, Midgarder. Yes, the scholars haven't figured out that yet. Oskarder is, of course, our world. We are the, we are the deities. Midgarder is just the name for the burial area, located inside a fence, where man is held in between death and life, waiting to be reborn. The inside of the burial mound is called Volhol, the hall of the chosen. Or of the fallen. A good strong tree of life was probably seen as a good thing. The taller, the older, and the bigger the tree, the more important the man inside the grave would be. The older he, he, he would be, the more times he would have been reborn, the more honor and esteem he would have been able to accumulate, the more memories he would have left behind. The more, the more draft from the past would you be able to find inside the mound. His bed under the tree was Volhol, the hall of the chosen or the fallen, and this is as we know Odin's hall. All the tree roots and all the sacred wells are located in Volhol. Just like Thor is known for his hammer flying through the air, in symbolism often often depicted as a hook, hook cross, uh, the uh, Sanskrit swastika. Odin is known for his Triskelion, alias Triquetra, alias from modern times the Valknut, a picture of three roots, the three legs on which the tree of life stands, the three wells of the three sacred sources. The Trinity, Odin, uh, this is me speaking here, Odin, Vili, and Ve, uh, you know, the three wells of the Norns, Urdebrunner, Mimisbrunner, Hvergelmir, and uh, the three realms, uh, Helheim, Jotunheim, and Niflheim. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. There is a runestone in Denmark. The Snow Delft Stone. I'm going to I'm going to mispronounce this probably, so bear with me. Known for its Odinic symbolism and text. Kunu Alts Stein Sunar Ruhalt Thular or Sal Halkun, which by scholars has been translated as Gunvalder Stone, son of Hroalder, reciter of Sauhauger. This should, however, probably be translated like this instead. Gunvalder Stone, son of Hro Alder, the sage of the burial mound. Oh, be, be, the burial, yeah. Gunvalder, son of Hro Alder, was in other words a man with Haminga and was located inside the burial mound. The rune stone was his Yggdrasil, the landmark showing others where he was buried, be, buried and how honorable he was possibly just showing the way to his grave. 
A Thuller, Proto Nordic Thuller, was a sage, a scout, a wise man, but the word originally means speech or long a string of words, which of course would fit like a hand in a glove if you consider how the rite of passage was, con was conducted. And to understand them in order to pass the test, i.e. The, and thus uh, become a Thuller. So the Honorable Gunvalger was now himself lying inside, waiting to be reborn by a man who could pass the test. Yep. Music, or indeed sounds in general, can also help elevate man to the divine. Or it can be used to lower man's spirit into the depths of the earth, into the spiritual abyss, to strengthen the Eden power in us, i.e. awaken base instincts and to suppress the gods in us. Just like the divine light forms and shapes our mind so does sounds. The European man who has only ever heard the birds sing, the winds howling, water running in the creeks, the waves washing the, the bare rock face on beaches, animals moving about in the forest, his loving family's voices, water boiling, thunder in the clouds, rain falling, and wood burning under the cauldron is never a cruel and sinister, sinister man. He is thoroughly good man, because in, uh, his European nature is perfectly intact. No poison is to be found in his words, no ill in his thoughts nothing impure in his spirit. The world is different today and all sorts, sorts of sounds penetrates into our minds every day. Yeah, disturbing the harmony therein causing us to feel uncomfortable. Uh, male, uh, maelstrom is being stir, stirred up in there made up of sounds clashing and words recording and bouncing off the inside of our heads or so it can feel in hell we feel tired we get headaches we grow melancholic or even depressed we more become aggressive and it becomes harder harder to stay in a good mood the sorcery of sound has its effect and we and we let it work without any guidance of control, not even knowing such a sorcery exists. Sound is as powerful as light is. It influences us no less than light does, and still we, we allow ourselves to be exposed to disharmonic, loud, extreme and uncomfortable sounds all the time. Would you stand and stare at the sun or even, or even a shining light bulb? No. Then why would you look uh, then why would you live or work in a noisy city and let the no less powerful sounds have a similar effect on you? The most har harmonious sounds we know are of course that we call music, and this can be used to stimulate the good in you, to make the deities grow stronger in you, to strengthen your mind and make you more courageous. Like Scottish Highlander back, backpipe music during an, ass an assault or drums in war in general, to inspire and to lift your mind. Music is sorcery. Every song is a spell. The deity of music in Scandinavia is called Bragi, but this is just another name for Bauder. So the deity of music in Scandinavia is Baudr. His Greek name is Apollon or Apollo. He is the most pure and innocent of all the gods. Let the light of Baudr shine upon you. Let his celestial music banish all darkness in you. Ave Apollon. Hailar Baudr. And I've just read from the small book called Reflections on European Mythology and Polytheism by none other than Varg himself. It's a really good book. I highly, 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 highly recommend it. It's a 
90 pages long but it's packed with a huge amount of wisdom so it is well worth your uh, money so do check it out and uh, I'll Odin <clears throat> the genealogy of the deities we most commonly assume that it's important to know who is the father mother sibling son or daughter of this or that deity in the same manner 
as it is important for us mortal men to know our relations. Naturally, the modern anti-European man and the scam science of psychology in particular has used the stories about the different love affairs of the deities and their family relations for all it's worth to present our deities as adulterous and incestuous but like always they get it all wrong the goddess Freya is described as having love affairs with a number of others and this sounds horrible until you, re you realize that she is just a picture of, ma of married women in general and naturally different married women have love affairs with different men with their own husbands in other contexts Freya's love affairs are just metaphors or even mysteries like the Snow White fairy tale when Freya is said to be married to her own twin brother, Freyr, it only means that the marriage was symbolic. They were the sacred male couple. There is nothing incestuous about this as the marriage was purely symbolic. Their children, the light elves, are but the Haminga generated by the male couple. The gods two are concepts and represent something in each initiated man and their often seemingly adulterous love affairs are explanations to different phenomena this offspring of these seemingly adulterous affairs uh, the offspring of these seemingly ad adulterous affairs are but the, the effects and consequences of the phenomenon in question. When a deity is the father of another, it does not mean that he actually fathered the other, but that first gave reason for the latter to come into existence, or that the or that the mastery of the powers of the first is a prerequisite for the mastery of the powers of the latter. E.g., like you first need to learn the, alf the alphabet. E.g., like you first need to learn the alphabet in order to read a text. Thus, in a mythological language, the alphabet is the father of reading and reading the son of the alphabet. No deity actually ever procreated in real life. So they have no sons or daughters, no fathers or mothers, and no siblings. There are but powers inside each one of us, and they lie there dormant until they are born or awakened by the right initiation mystery or trigger or other trigger. To a few, <coughs> To a few, at least, this sometimes becomes rather obvious too, like when Athena, Scandinavian Soga, is born fully armed from the forehead of Zeus, here Scandinavian Odin. Of course, the goddess of wisdom, lore, philosophy, courage, inspiration, etc. is born from the alert mind. So just like there are no different races of gods, there are no different families of gods either. The deities are related to each other, not like mortal men, but like natural or supernatural phenomena. Like effects and counter effects, actions and reactions, etc. And to understand them, we we need to think of them as such and understand the mythological language of Europe. The thunder, Thor, chases the lightning, Loki, because you can always hear the thunder after you have seen the lightning and the thunder is married to the crops, Sith, because the thunder brings about rain and rain 